Live from WSLS, this is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. The official investigation into the January riot at the Capitol begins today. I really want to have a constructive hearing here. We all saw the horror of what happened. We'll break down what to expect and the key witnesses we'll hear from. Today marks one year since the killing of Ahmaud Arbery. How his death is still leaving its mark on our country and the Commonwealth. Virginia is on track to become the first southern state to abolish the death penalty, while the daughter of a local murder victim supports this historic legislation. Good morning and happy Tuesday to you. We thank you for waking up with us this morning. I'm Patrick McKee alongside Jenna Zipton and Rachel Lucas. And if you're sick of that nasty cold that we've been stuck with Amen. for a bit now, like all of us, we've got some good news for you this morning. Chris Michaels here to deliver it, and we're glad you get to deliver some good news. Oh, yeah, well. we're going to cheer you on this yes. morning instead of boo you. Well, thank you. That's a, a nice change this morning. <laughs> uh, as we get you started out with a live look at the Roanoke Blacksburg Airport, where currently temperatures are sitting at a comfortable and tolerable 40 degrees. Lynchburg at 38, Blacksburg at 36, Danville the cold spot at 31 so far this morning. Radar not showing much to be concerned with as we show you the next six hours. Notice by lunchtime temperatures all Already about 50 to 55 degrees pretty much area wide afternoon highs in the Roanoke Valley ranging from the upper 50s to the lower 60s so we'll improve even after yesterday's a little bit of warmth that we had during the afternoon just breezy at times so if you want to take the car out for a wash or maybe do some grilling gonna be a great afternoon for that high temperatures uh, at around 4 p.m. I should say will be in the mid to upper 50s by 8 p.m. however we start to cool things down we're mild and windy with temperatures by 8 p.m. in the middle top 40s. It's been more than a month and a half since the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Today, lawmakers begin hearings on what happened and how to prevent this from happening again. There will be two hearings by different committees to examine the security failures that led to the breach. Four witnesses are set to testify, the acting chief of the Metropolitan Police Department, the former Senate Sergeant at Armors, Arms, the former House Sergeant at Arms, and the former chief of the U.S. Capitol Police. The hearing won't just be a fact finding mission, though. There's also a push to uncover what kind of change needs to happen. Decisions have to be made, including who will be hired uh, as a new police chief um, and what better protocols can be put in place. The other hearing with additional witnesses is scheduled for Thursday. Investigators are trying to find out what caused engine trouble on a Boeing passenger jet that forced the pilot to make an emergency landing. Investigators say it appears one fan blade on the Boeing 777 had an engine failure that's consistent with metal fatigue. The United Airlines plane was flying from Denver to Honolulu Saturday when it had engine trouble. Pieces of the engine rained down on a Colorado neighborhood. Not only blew through the case and blew through the cowling, but actually penetrated the fuselage, damaging the fuselage, the wing, and blowing out a window, causing a depressurization. Boeing has recommended airlines ground all 777s with the type of engine involved in the incident while the investigation goes on. One year ago today, Ahmad Arbery, a 25-year-old Georgia man, was killed during a jog. His name didn't make national headlines until months later when cell phone video of his shooting death went viral. According to our sister station in Jacksonville, Arbery's death was said to be due to a citizen's arrest and originally no one was charged. But after that video of his death was released and protests followed, the case escalated. Now, Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael and William Roddy Bryan are awaiting trial. Greg McMichael said he thought Arbery was a burglary suspect. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live this morning with how a year later his death is still leaving its mark on our country and the Commonwealth. Megan, good morning. Good morning. So we all know that 2020 made history, not just because of the pandemic that we're all going through right now, but the nationwide protests and racial unrest. It all started with the viral video of Ahmaud Arbery's shooting death. Dr. Brandy Faulkner, professor of Africana Studies and Political Science at Virginia Tech, says the outrage and call for justice led to a movement. She believes Arbery's shooting death, combined with the death of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, gave people a new sense of urgency that something had to be done, even here in Virginia. 
course, we haven't had the trial yet, so we don't know what the outcome of that particular case will be. But what we have seen is that some states have um, started to make some progress with criminal justice reform. For example, this month, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp is asking the state's legislator to repeal a Civil War era citizen's arrest law that was cited as a reason the three men now awaiting trial were not originally held accountable. Now, Aubrey's story has sparked change here in Southwest Virginia. Coming up, we tell you how it's impacted a local running store. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. Thanks, Megan. A bill to abolish the death penalty in Virginia is headed to the governor's desk. It's a major milestone for Virginia, which has executed more people than any other state. Governor Northam says he will sign the bill. This will make Virginia the 23rd state to outlaw executions. Rachel Sutphin is among those pushing for the change. Her father, Montgomery County Corporal Eric Sutphin, was killed by William Morva, who was executed in 2017. She says this is a turning point for Virginia and serious criminal justice reform. I have been working on this since 2017 because I see the death penalty as an outdated and an effective measure. Having the death penalty abolished both moves Virginia forward, but also sets as an example for other states and the federal government. Republican lawmakers say there are certain criminals that deserve execution. While it was a bipartisan vote, most Republicans voted against it. A bill that's gained a lot of traction from our area is moving forward. The bill, which would be a big step to create an Amtrak stop in the New River Valley, is just waiting for the governor's signature. If passed, it will allow for VDOT, Norfolk Southern, Amtrak, and the region to discuss another stop. There's a big push for the passenger rail system to extend that way because of Virginia Tech and Radford University students. Route 460 is still shut down near Rich Creek in Giles County, where a mudslide continues to grow. Crews have been working to clear the debris near the West Virginia border since it was first reported on Sunday. The likely cause, we're told, is due to heavily saturated soil caused by recent rain and snow. That then caused a water line to break. VDOT says the road likely will not reopen anytime soon. Because the mountaintop comes close to the river, any long-term restoration is likely to be quite costly. Attorney General Mark Herring is going after an agency he says preys on immigrants. Herring joined forces with the New York and Massachusetts Attorneys General to sue Virginia-based organization Libre. They say the company targets detained immigrants who can't pay their release bond. Today's lawsuit is really a culmination of years of work to bring this exploitative business and its owners to justice. The lawsuit alleges Libre and its parent company violate consumer protection laws. It asks for millions in money reparations. 608 now in what's news today. The Montgomery County School Board will talk about returning students to the classroom. The superintendent's plan brings them in person four days a week starting on March 8th. The results of a parent questionnaire are going to be presented. The plan was unveiled last week, but the school board needed more time to decide. The Henry County Board of Supervisors and School Board holding a joint meeting to discuss the upcoming school year budget. The two boards will also discuss refinancing $1.1 million in school debt to reduce future costs. The Roanoke County Board of Supervisors could pass a resolution encouraging the school system to provide in-person learning options for all students at least four days a week by March 15th. The board cites Governor Northam's announcement earlier this month and learning loss over the past year. Lynchburg City Council will get an update on proposed real estate values based on the latest assessments. Residential values are proposed to increase 9.3%, commercial values increasing 2.19%, and industrial at 7.2%. The increase could bring nearly $5 million more dollars in taxes to Lynchburg. Martinsville City Council will discuss redevelopment of the former BB&T on Ellsworth Street. The property would be used for both commercial and residential. Some city offices could relocate to the first floor. At the July City Council meeting, the developer said construction is expected to take about a year. 609, a beloved member of the Christiansburg Police Department has died. K-9 officer Buck unexpectedly died over the weekend due to an underlying health issue. 
He worked for three and a half years with Officer Chad Eversole in tracking and narcotics detection. He also went to community and school events. 610 this morning coming up a local 10 year old giving gifts for his birthday. Why he wanted to say thank you to a local organization that helps wildlife. The new at 644 filling a hole in the Hill City. We had to buy a bigger mixer, we bought a bigger oven, we hired, we doubled our staff. The amount of bagels this one shop's made in just four months. And tasty Tuesday, doesn't that look good? Mm-hmm. We're all paying more at the gas pump right now. The reason behind the price spike and if it will last. And temperatures spiking by this afternoon. That's going to mean a great day for taking a walk or a jog. We'll start out chilly this morning. Temperatures in the 30s. Most of us about 55 to 60 degrees by the afternoon. Comes with a little bit of a price as the wind will pick up. I'll show you how strong it gets. Plus, what the odds are of maybe a little more wintry weather later this week. Coming up in about five minutes. Know your zone. Get a tailored forecast specific to where you are. Your local weather authority alerting you to the next weather maker moving into your zone, making it easier for you to plan ahead. Know your zone only from WSLS 10. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. 614 now as more COVID-19 vaccines become available in the U.S., the Mayo Clinic and other hospital systems across the country have begun community vaccinations for older adults. Both of the vaccines authorized for use in the U.S. have been shown to be 94 to 95 percent effective in preventing COVID-19 infection in all patients, including those 80 and older. We have some evidence to show that it's um, similarly effective in the older population. The immune response may not be as good as the younger, less than 65, but uh, did not seem to be that significantly different. While getting the vaccine into the arms of as many ad older adults as possible is important, Dr. Burke says everybody needs to continue taking precautions after being vaccinated for the virus. You've probably noticed you're paying more at the pump these days. Gas prices are at some of the most expensive we've seen in over a year. AAA says it has a lot to do with the forced shutdown of the Gulf Coast and some Midwest refineries due to last week's winter weather. Right now, Virginia's average is 253, up 13 cents from a week ago and 30 cents from this time last year. AAA says there should be some relief coming soon. Many of the refineries that were shuttered because of the weather have been in the process of restarting or plan to restart very soon. And once they can get back in operation and get those fuel deliveries going once again, uh, that should help stabilize things and hopefully bring prices down just a little bit. Oil prices are also high right now. That national average is 263. Your local weather authority always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Well, temperatures are coming up, too. I think a lot of us happy about that. Blacksburg starting out at 36, Roanoke at 40. Martinsville, you're the exception at 27 degrees. Live looks there for you in Blacksburg, Roanoke, and Martinsville this morning. But temperatures turning around big time as we head into the afternoon. So whereas we start out with the coats this morning, we shed away at the layers and eventually end up in T-shirts this afternoon. Roanoke at 58, Covington at 57, Alta Vista and Martinsville at 63, Pulaski with a pair of nickels this afternoon. Only flying the ointment for us is going to be the wind, but it actually kind of helps us out. It actually helps to warm things up and dry things out. It is just going to be pretty windy at times. As you notice, between about 1 and 5 p.m., our wind gusts will range between 30 and 40 miles per hour. Maybe not quite as strong as you head toward Lynchburg or you head toward Southside. Wind will calm down tonight. That's going to allow us the opportunity to cool down by tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning, we start out with temperatures in the low to mid 30s and that not necessarily a sign of what's to come during the afternoon. In fact, we build upon the warmth that we see today by tomorrow afternoon. Noon, Blacksburg about 15 degrees above the average. That's really the case for the rest of us. As you see, Blacksburg at 62, middle to possibly upper 60s from Roanoke to Lynchburg to Danville. So all of a sudden, all that ice, all that nonsense becomes a distant memory, or so we think. Wednesday and Thursday, our winter weather threat at zero. It's low for right now, Friday 
afternoon, Friday evening. If we do see anything, it would mainly be west of the parkway. There's just a limited amount of cold air around at the same time that a storm system is riding to the south. So I do think this is mostly rain. Going to have to watch out for a wintry mix in some of our areas west of the parkway. Again, that would be Friday evening. And at the moment, doesn't look like it's going to be a major ordeal, but we'll keep you posted. For the Roanoke Valley, again, we love the look of that. 60s tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures come down by about 10 degrees by Thursday afternoon. We're dry, though. We're cold with rain settling in Friday afternoon in the Roanoke Valley. And then some opportunities for showers at times this weekend. I don't necessarily think Saturday is going to be a washout. Sunday is trending wetter with temperatures in the 50s. For the Lynchburg area, 60 today. Warmer tomorrow with temperatures coming down a little bit by Thursday. We're in the 50s. 40s for highs Friday with mostly rain later in the day into the night. Some of that bleeds over into Saturday morning with weekend high temperatures. Not too bad despite the rain we will be in the 50s. Time now 618. Let's get you caught up on another round of drive times. We're looking good across southwest and central Virginia as you head out the door this morning. Your drive on 460 Lynchburg to Roanoke coming in at 51 minutes on 220 Roanoke to Rocky Mount. We'll take you 28. Good morning, everybody. The Hokies coming off a two week COVID delay will host Georgia Tech tonight. Conditioning could be an issue. You know, I can see it. Um, we don't scrimmage a lot. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, working on stuff and um, uh, certainly this time of year, we don't get up and down the floor. Um, and we don't, uh, we don't, uh, there's not a lot of contact in, uh, in practice, but um, had to uh, rethink that. You know, we scrimmaged, uh, we probably scrimmaged uh, three four minute games. So it's a legitimate game tie score. Uh, just to um, just to get them up and down. The Hokies last game was February 6th at Miami. Georgia Tech comes in 11 and 8, 7 and 6 in the league. Class 2 Wrestling State Championships from Salem, 132 pounds. Lebanon's Luke Childress in some trouble with Glenver's Jade Klein. Childress had the lead. Klein rallies reversal, near fall, five seconds left. He wins in the semis, moves on, and wins the 132-pound state championship. Glenver finished fourth in the team standings. 160 pounds, James Rivers. Hunter Forbes finishes the season undefeated as he wins the state championship at Class 2 as well. James River, James River finishes third in the team standings. John Epicello, 10 Sports. Pulaski County Schools going back on plans for their upcoming football season. Last week, the district announced cheerleaders and band members would be considered participants during football games to allow more family members into the games. Now, because of an amendment to the governor's COVID restrictions, the groups will be considered spectators, cutting the number of fans originally allowed inside. School leaders say they're frustrated by the executive order. 620 now still to come this morning. A new outdoor classroom is coming to Lynchburg. Now staff's transforming a space that's gone unused for quite some time. Plus, a local boy gave away presents for his birthday. Why he wanted to give back to the community. In a feel good follow up this morning, a local 10 year old chose to give gifts instead of receive them this year for his birthday. We told you about Gabe and Salem on Friday. He turned 10 Sunday and is for his birthday. He wanted to take up donations for the Southwest Virginia Wildlife Center. And the community certainly showed up. As you can see in this video, a number of vehicles drove through his birthday parade and dropped off donations that the center needed. His mom said it was important to them to help the organization that cares for so many injured and orphaned wildlife each year. Animals that get injured in the wild, they need help too. And I think for us is that, you know, all animals, if we can help them, we will. And so the rescue center to us is very dear to our heart. Gabe and his mom rescued this little cardinal a while back. The center was able to rehabilitate the bird. and This was Gabe's way of saying thank you. He collected a trunk full of supplies and nearly $500. That Pretty is incredible. Awesome. What a thoughtful wow. thing to do. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. And the community coming out big time for that too. Yeah, you sort of had a feeling that that would happen, especially just with how caring he's been and, yeah. and mm -hmm. everything. So it's good to see that. 
Uh, time now 625 as we're heading out this morning. Temperatures are running a little cool. We're only in the 30s across much of the area. The exception to that being south side where we're actually colder. But check out how temperatures rise really nicely by 11 a.m. A lot of us in the upper 40s and lower 50s turning a little breezy at times as we head into the afternoon. But look at that. A nice recovery in south side. Martinsville, Chatham, South Boston, 63. Charlotte Courthouse at 62. We'll take that 62 over power outages in ice in Charlotte County. I'm sure about that. We'll be in the upper 60s by tomorrow afternoon in Southside and even upper 50s by Thursday, but only upper 40s by Fridays. We see more rain building in during the afternoon and evening and then settling into sort of a wet pattern from the weekend through early next week. But even still, it's a wet pattern, not necessarily wintry with high temperatures in the 50s. 626, it's been one year since the shooting of Ahmaud Arbery. How his story is sparking a change right here in Southwest Virginia. Plus, brand new video and audio of Mars. A first look at the red planet from Perseverance. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Remembering the half a million lives lost due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as America marks a grim day, the glimmers of hope we're now seeing in the fight against the virus. Transforming a boring school courtyard. We saw this space and knew that it would be perfect for this vision. How these Lynchburg librarians are bringing it to life for students and staff. The itch to try something new has turned into something big in the Hill City. I taught myself, I actually, um, I, Google was a big help. <laughs> we take you through the process of making the perfect bagel and Tasty Tuesday. We're getting you ready for breakfast this morning and a good morning to you. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. I'm Rachel Lucas here with Patrick McKee and Jenna Zipton. It is a warm up. We've been waiting for this since, Hallelujah. I don't know, December, Chris. <laughs> yeah. And it's finally here. Yeah, thank goodness for that, especially after the past few weeks we've been through. We're starting out cold, especially in Martinsville. But man, that sunrise already looking good. Get your cameras, your phones ready and send us whatever pictures you got of this morning sunrise that from our our new College Institute sky cam again Martinsville starting out in the upper 20s, but the wind is starting to help things out a little bit. It is a little breezy at times, especially within Grayson counties and into parts of the highlands. But that wind is actually going to come down the mountains and start to warm things up nicely for us. In fact, I'm thinking high temperatures, upper 40s and lower 50s for parts of the highlands. But as you head toward Covington, Lexington, Buena Vista, I'm thinking low to mid 50s for you this afternoon and building upon that as we head into tomorrow as well, at which point we'll be in the upper 50s and lower 60s in the highlands. Quick hitting shower tomorrow evening into early Thursday morning. Otherwise, the pattern turns a little wetter, especially as we head into Friday afternoon and evening. Could even see some snow showers in parts of the highlands. Really just depends on just how much cold air we've got around, but not going to be wintry this weekend. Just wet at times with high temperatures in the lower 50s. A grim milestone surpassed half a million Americans killed by COVID-19. President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris and their spouses led the nation in a moment of silence Monday night to honor those people. 500 candles lit the night. President Biden asked every American to take a moment and reflect. We have to resist becoming numb to the sorrow. Remember those we lost and those who left behind. But in the face of overwhelming grief, there are glimmers of hope. The number of new cases are declining for the fifth week in a row, according to the CDC. Officials also say the delayed vaccines due to winter weather across the country should be delivered by midweek. A new vaccine from Johnson & Johnson is also awaiting emergency use approval. The Virginia flag will fly at half staff for the remainder of this work week. Governor Northam issued the statewide order yesterday in memory of the 500,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19. President Biden issued a similar order for all U.S. flags to be flown at half staff. The Virginia Department of Health announced Walgreens has added seven more stores that will provide COVID rapid antigen testing, and one of those is local. The Walgreens on Timberlake Road in Lynchburg will begin offering the tests. It is free. 
Today marks one year since the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery. The 25-year-old Georgia man was killed while out for a jog. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with how his death sparked change hundreds of miles away right here in southwest Virginia. Yeah, his death resonated with the owners of Fleet, Fleet, Fleet Feet in Roanoke. They told me they've always looked at a walk or run, a simple jog like the one Aubrey was on before he was shot to death as safe and in inclusive. In the wake of his death, as well as George Floyd's death, Fleet Feet Roanoke sold t-shirts like these that say we move forward together and spread kindness. It's the Roanoke way. 100% of the cost went to tap and humble hustle and raised more than $3,700. Now for Black History Month, they're selling these shirts that say together stronger together to benefit humble hustle and the Boys and Girls Club. People who are here in Roanoke, we love our community and we want to help. And a lot of times people don't know how to help. And so we're just trying to do what little things we can. If you are part of the running community, there is a virtual global run in honor of Ahmaud Aubrey. We'll have more information on WSLS.com later today. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. The Virginia Senate passed a bill that would prohibit school boards from suing families to collect school meal debt. The measure builds off two bills introduced during the 2020 General Assembly session. One prohibits school employees from throwing away a meal served to a child who then couldn't pay for it. The other allows school boards to solicit donations to offset or eliminate school meal debt. The bill passed the House of Delegates late last month. It now heads to Governor Northam for approval. A new outdoor classroom is coming to Lynchburg in a space that's going unused. Two women who work in the library at Sandusky Middle School came up with the courtyard makeover. It's bigger than a traditional classroom. They're getting nearly $5,000 from the Lynchburg Education Foundation to make it happen. And it will include portable projectors and dry erase boards. Not only does having an experience in an outdoor classroom benefit students and staff, Socially and emotionally, it also has incredible benefits for cognitive ability, which leads to greater academic gains. And then this was the part that really had us sold on the project is not only does it benefit students while they're using the outdoor classroom, but it benefits their whole entire day as well. They are getting input from teachers and students about what they want, and students will help with the makeover, too. Pretty cool, Chris. You know, by this afternoon, class outdoors would be pretty awesome. Maybe not this morning. Temperatures starting out at 35 in Blacksburg. Nice clear sky for you. The sun rising earlier and earlier from our Virginia Tech sky cam. So we're on our way to a very nice day. In the New River Valley, looking at some improvements in temperatures, especially by the afternoon, at which point we'll be in the low to mid 50s. Could even be about 10 degrees warmer in the NRV by tomorrow afternoon. 636, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. How the friendship between two local basketball coaches has benefited countless students at Roanoke High School. If storms move through your neighborhood and you safely take a photo or video, feel free to share it with us. Open the Weather Authority app, click pins on the bottom, then click drop a pin. You can upload your picture or video here. 639 now 10 news continues working for you sharing stories of notable Virginians during Black History Month. Coaches serve as more than teachers of the game, but also mentors for the countless number of athletes. But as 10 News sports reporter Eric Johnson explains many times, it's their own personal journeys that are unknown. As the old saying has it, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. That has benefited a countless number of student athletes at William Fleming High School, all thanks to one special connection between two coaches. Marshall Ashford was a standout player at Virginia Tech during the 1970s who had a chance to reach the next level. Uh, my senior year at Tech, I was drafted by the Washington Bullets. Uh, I was a fifth round draft pick, went to camp. He didn't make the team, but returned to Blacksburg in 1979. That's when he learned more about an incoming standout Juco player, Mickey Hardy, who was once fifth in the nation in scoring at Ferrum Junior College. Had a chance to play against him in some of the pickup games and so forth, and that was my first uh, 
foray with Coach Harden. That friendship would come full circle years later when the duo would take the helm as coaches at William Fleming with one goal in mind. At some point, the basketball is going to stop bouncing, but life going to continue on. So my job as a basketball coach is, and a mentor is to make sure that they take something away from me that's positive. A story of passing, scoring, and winning the game of life. Hopefully we give all of our students here at Fleming some insight as to what they can become. Eric Johnson has the full sit down with the coaches Ashford and Hardy and a few of the former players they've impacted. That's coming up tonight on 10 News at 7. Chris, you could probably remember coaches have such an impact on our lives. Absolutely, yeah. Whether it's sports or if you're in uh, band or cheerleading, no matter what it is, you always have somebody that really uh, puts you on the right direction. So got to be thankful for those people in our lives. Also be thankful for the forecast today. Things are looking great in the Lynchburg area. We're starting out chilly, low to mid 30s this morning, but we're back up to near 60 degrees by this afternoon. We can thank the jet stream for that toward the north. So the warm air is going to stay around through tomorrow especially and through Thursday but we're timing out our next three weather makers coming up in about five minutes. 641 perseverance working hard on Mars right now. We'll show you the new breathtaking sights and sounds the rovers captured. A breakfast spot that's doing more than just filling your stomach. We show you its mission in Tasty Tuesday. Welcome back. The time now is 644. As a kid, I remember oftentimes going with my mom to the deli or to the bagel store. So every now and then with Tasty Tuesday, I try and find one of those that does it just right. We struck gold this Tasty Tuesday when we found Bacon Street Bagels in Lynchburg. We're sort of filling a hole that the, you know, that the community wanted. Bacon Street Bagels adds something new to the Hill City, which is already a place flourishing with great places to eat. To owner Jordan Hawkins, it's more than just the food, but a bigger mission. The employees are kind of, uh, they're just, they sort of wrung out like wet rags. Hawkins says Bacon Street is a place to feel fulfilled. A self-taught baker, he walks us through the time-consuming process. A, a classic New York-style bagel, um, start to finish, usually takes about a day or so. Start off by mixing the yeast and the flour and the water, and that has to sit for about two hours. We mix in all the rest of the dry ingredients, anything else that we need to make that specific type of bagel. We, we roll them all out by hand. Um, after that point, um, they go in the fridge and they, uh, they cold ferment overnight. And that's where you get a lot of the flavor, a lot of that really rich, bready flavor. Boiled and baked, the bagels then get a crispy crust with a chewy center. It's no wonder why Bacon Street took the Hill City by storm right away. We sold out the first nine straight days that we were open. We had to buy a bigger mixer, we bought a bigger oven, we high, we doubled our staff. He estimates they've made 20,000 bagels in just four months, with more to come, especially with the delicious sandwiches they craft each day. The classic bacon, egg, and cheese is a hit, along with some other special ones. Avocado BLT, and um, one of my personal favorites, the Lenora. Uh, it's actually named after my grandmother. And if you need a jolt to go with your bagel, this poppin' bagel shop has some killer coffee, too. A combination of great food, drinks, and company to get your day started off just right. Yum. Boy, that looks good. <laughs> it does. I'm hungry now. Finding a good bagel is hard to do sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Because you got to have that right amount of crunch and that right amount of chewy. Mm -hmm. So I sampled the plain, the everything, the French toast. Mm. And then the oh, spread toast. that right. goes on it. Ooh. Yeah, the cream cheese with all the different flavors. Yeah. And, and the good thing is they, they don't just make their own bagels, but they make their own spreads as well. Oh, so oh you, nice. You've got all that. We're going to show you the list of each on our website. This story coming up later this morning on WSLS.com. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. All right, now it's time for our picture of the day. This is this is just wild. I know a lot of us have seen icicles growing with the past few storms, but this one takes it to a whole new level. Thanks to Mary in Bath County. She says this has been growing for days now. Hopefully today it's going to start to shrink as we get some warmer air coming in here. Rono currently at 40 degrees. Covington at 39, Smith Mountain Lake and Lynchburg at 38. 
35 in Blacksburg and Hillsville. Martinsville, you're the cold spot at 27 this morning, but eventually you'll rebound very nicely this afternoon. High temperatures, middle topper 50s from the NRV to the Highlands to the Roanoke Valley. We're near 60 this afternoon in Lynchburg. We're into the 60s in Southside. So whereas you start out as a cold spot on the map, Southside, you're actually going to be the warm spot this afternoon. And we can thank the wind for a little bit of this warm up as it comes in off the mountains. The air compresses, it dries, it warms up. But this wind is going to be booking it as we head into the afternoon. I'd say between about 1 and 4, 1 and 5 p.m. Could see gusts anywhere from 30 to perhaps 45 miles per hour in the Roanoke Valley, the Highlands, and in the New River Valley. But as you head farther east of the parkway, wind gusts won't be quite as strong, about 20 to 30 miles per hour. Once the wind calms down, temperatures will drop down by first thing tomorrow morning. We're in the low to mid 30s. By tomorrow afternoon, an authentic feel of spring air. In fact, the warmest day that we'll have had since mid-December is most, if not all of us, settle into the 60s by tomorrow afternoon. So a great afternoon to maybe take the car for a wash. I still have all that salt and brine on my car. Definitely going to get that off in the next few days. A little cooler Thursday. By Friday, tracking a round of afternoon precipitation, most of which should be in the form of rain. But we have to see just how much cold air is available by the evening evening, at which point we could change things over to a brief wintry mix, especially in the mountains. So we'll keep you posted on that. I think the most widespread rain Saturday as of right now looks to be in the morning with some afternoon breaks before rain becomes more likely by Sunday. So it's not to say it'll be raining all 48 hours this weekend, but it will be raining at times as we once again get into a very wet pattern, but at least it won't be as cold for the new river valley 50s today, lower 60s tomorrow near 50 Thursday. You see temperatures temperatures coming on down by Friday as we see rain to start, possibly changing over to snow. We'll start out with rain Saturday morning and then we'll see it increase by Sunday and Monday again. Temperatures in the 50s for the Roanoke Valley 50s today, 60s tomorrow into the 50s Thursday. Then comes Friday where we're definitely much cooler temperatures in the 40s. Looking at mostly rain as of right now in the Roanoke Valley. We'll let you know if anything changes with that as we settle into Friday evening. Time now 650. Let's get you caught up on drive times in the NRV and they are looking good. Whitfield to Pulaski on 81 33 minutes right on time. Also on time, Parisburg to Blacksburg at 34 minutes. New this morning, two of the largest remaining American tire companies are joining forces. Goodyear Tire and Rubber is buying Cooper Tire in a deal valued at $2.5 billion. That deal nearly doubles Goodyear's presence in China. The global tire industry was hard hit as the COVID-19 pandemic led to a sharp decline in demand for replacement tires. The plant in Danville shut down for about a month at the beginning of the pandemic. The landing of NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars captured the fascination of the entire world last week. The images are as breathtaking as the scope of the mission itself. Now NASA is releasing this new footage and sounds from the Red Planet. Take a listen. That was the first sound of wind gusts on Mars never heard before. The new video also shows the final minutes of the rover's entry, descent and landing. Perseverance is the fifth rover NASA has landed on Mars. Europe's most active volcano shot lava and rocks into the sky for hours. Look at this. An Italian expert said the continuing eruption of Mount Etna on the island of Sicily is more intense than other recent eruptions. The explosion sent lava flowing for miles down the slopes over the weekend. So far, there have been no injuries or damage. Experts say the volcano does not pose a threat to towns nearby. Coming up on 652, we got five things you need to know. Coming up next. It is 655. Here's a look at five things you need to know before you head out the door. It's been more than a month and a half since the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Today, lawmakers begin hearings on what happened and how to prevent this from happening again. There will be two hearings by different committees to examine the security failures that led to the breach. Four witnesses are set to testify. A bill to abolish the death penalty in Virginia is headed to the governor's desk. While it was a bipartisan vote, most Republicans voted against it. It's a major milestone for Virginia, which has executed more people than any other state. Governor Northam says he will sign the bill. 
This will make Virginia the 23rd state to outlaw executions. Route 460 still shut down near Rich Creek in Giles County, where a mudslide continues to grow. Crews have been working to clear the debris near the West Virginia border. Well, we're told the likely cause of that mudslide was heavy, saturated soil caused by recent rains and snow. Then that caused a water line to break. VDOT says the road likely will not reopen anytime soon. The Virginia flag will fly at half staff for the remainder of the work week. Governor Northam issued the statewide order yesterday in memory of the 500,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19. President Biden issued a similar order for all U.S. flags to be flown at half staff. And the sunrise underway, it's off to a good start from Poor Mountain from Virginia Tech, Martinsville and the Roanoke Blacksburg Airport. Get your phones, your cameras ready. Send us some pictures if it is a nice one by you. It's going to be a nice day no matter where you go. Temperatures mostly 55 to 60 today, even warmer tomorrow. 50s by Thursday with rain starting out Friday. Some of that could mix in with a little snow, especially west of the parkway. We'll keep you posted on the trends throughout the next few days. I know you will be watching it closely. Coming up next on today, the pivotal role one church played in the Underground Railroad. We want to leave you this morning with a live look at downtown Roanoke from our Virginia Tech Carillion Skycam. We're going to have a very pretty sunrise coming up this morning. Thanks so much for waking up with us this morning. We hope you have a wonderful Tuesday.